Hello guys, this is Yara here and I got first place at a box tournament playing Flounderies. I think I have become pretty good with this deck because I've been playtesting non-stop. Uh, the box tournament had six rounds, three rounds of regular tournament and then three rounds of top cut because it was top eight. And I ended up getting first place. Yeah, I ended up getting a trophy. You might be able to see it on the picture right here. And I ended up also getting a box, which was pretty amazing. And I did do a tier list saying that Plounderies was in the top five. And a lot of people doubted me. But I'm over here to prove you guys that Plounderies is a top contender. It doesn't get hurt by a lot of side decks. So, yeah, I made a pretty sweet deck list that I'm going to be showcasing. It. I'm going to be doing it in, in a little bit of a different style because I don't have two cameras. So, I... I'm gonna do it right here. I'm gonna showcase it right in front of you guys so we can, we can make eye contact. You know, I'm, I'm trying not to be as awkward, okay? I'm trying to be smooth here. So, but yeah, let's get started with the deck profile. Um, and hope you guys enjoy it. But yeah, let's get started. So, we're playing one ostrich and one toucan, right? I don't think the additional ones are necessary anymore. The reason why we used to play more than one of each was because of Kerstira banishing your deck face down. But now that Kerstira won't be able to do that as often, uh, you don't have to worry about getting your little birds banished. But speaking of three ofs, uh, we're playing three Eaglin, you have to play three Eaglin. And then we're playing three Robina. Because Robina is uh, a one card starter, so why wouldn't we max out on it, right? Uh, we're playing one DD Crow. Shout out to the duelist that traded me this for a Ghost Rare. Uh, this has been giving me good luck. I got second place at a case tournament with Tri Brigade using this, and now I got first place at a box tournament using this. So it's my good luck charm. So uh, we're playing two Empin. The third one did come up one time in, in a grind game, but I think two is the sweet spot. You don't want to go overboard. And we're playing one Avian and one Mega Risa. So I kind of wish that instead of Avian, I, I put in a second Ryza. Ryza just came in clutch, especially when you're in a top deck scenario. You can put your opponent on a top deck war and Ryza just wins there because you basically make it so their next draw, you know what their next draw is and it's going to be a useless card. So they're just going to lose the game. And that's it for the monsters, right? Uh, you might be wondering, where are the hand traps? Where's Shifter? Where's where's Droll? Come on, y'all. Where are they at? Well... We're playing none of, none of them on the main deck. Um, and the reason for that, the only hand trap we have is Diddy Crow is because it's searchable. And the reason for that, you might want you might want to see it on uh, a couple of cards that um, I'm going to show you guys. So uh, for the spells, we're playing one Terraforming, one Feather Duster in the main, one Call by the Grave, and one Unexplore Winds. Once again, we don't need the second Unexplore Winds because we don't have to worry about getting it banished now that Kerstira... Is not doing that anymore, so one is just good enough. I was playing two Book of Moon, it overperformed all tournament long. Being able to dodge those Imperms, those Veilers, putting the opponent's Sprite Monster face down so they, they can't like special summon from hand just came in so clutch. So, Book of Moon overperformed. Uh, you might want to consider maxing it out, but I don't know what I would cut. So, we're playing three of one of the best fuel spells in the game. This car is insane. Additional normal summon plus being able to get you a Flounderies card from your deck, so... And we're playing three Dark Ruler No More, absolutely clutch. I Dark Ruler No More uh, Nick uh, on the finals twice because I Dark Ruler, then he activated like a, a Fusion Trap card, and I Dark Ruler again, <laughs> which is pretty crazy, so... It's not a once per turn, by the way, so... Uh, we're playing three Dualities for consistency, we're playing Plot of Extravagance, the main reason being is because I can't I can't afford the prosperities, right? So we have to adapt. And I made my extra deck to be able to adapt to this. And this actually overperformed. Like, you don't really need your extra deck in Flandery. So why wouldn't we run a pot of greed that's free for us, right? So, and speaking of uh, Flounderies, uh, we have the three advents, so clutch, dodging those uh, imperms, veilers, absolutely clutch. Chaining to the droll, so you get an, an additional draw. Winning out in time, which I never won a match because of time, um, so that's a good aspect. I ended up winning a game because of, my, uh, because of time, because of this, but uh, it ended up being a draw. But um, And then for the last spell... We're playing three Morganite, three Time Tearing Morganite. 
this car is absolutely broken it it's so good because i built this deck to be able to play with this in mind i the side deck which you guys are going to see i have a car there that utilizes this so well uh and that won me a bunch of games um time tiering morganite is so insane right especially in the grind game being able to draw two being able to normal summon twice insane and lastly for the trap cards we're running two evenlies and one uh one dreaming town so we don't need the second dreaming town we really don't it's not gonna get banished phase down because uh Kirstira is not doing that anymore so that's it for the main deck so and for the for the extra deck we're just gonna go by pretty quick you guys need to stay for the side deck the side deck is spicy okay so and i'm gonna explain all my choices in the side deck i believe that side deck is what wins you games right your main deck is there just to um kind of get a field of what your opponent is doing try to take a game or two but your side deck is really what gets you like over the top right you need to build your side deck pretty well but now for the extra day we're just gonna go pretty fast uh one fuko we're playing uh three assembles uh just to be able to attack directly uh we're playing three starling to be able to search like a dd crow or something uh we're playing the one uh, song blue we're playing the one promenade uh we're actually playing two promenades uh we're playing one downer we, and we're playing one zeus because we only have one so uh zeus once again it only came up once and i didn't extravagance that time so i was able to make it and then to wrap it up uh, we're playing one all mirage one nightmare unicorn and one uh for higher donner because uh we need ways to out the guska and this is a way to out it you might be wondering why the almirage is because this requires two different types so we can't really make it with two wing beasts so we go into almirage and then we go into donner uh, once again uh, you can only use your extra deck if you haven't activated either of the effects of the little birds so and now for the side deck which I, i've been hyping it up so let's see we're playing three cosmic cyclone i'm not playing uh lightning storm because i believe a lot of people side anti-spill fragrance versus you or a lot of people are already citing anti-spill fragrance because it's a really good card it's an imperial order basically but so you need a way to be able to play around that by banishing it three ghost bell because uh branded is very popular right now and it's very good against branded um speaking of branded we're playing three ash uh three ash against the brandon matchup and against a lot of matchups uh and then we have six auto win cards six auto win cards uh which is kind of insane and it's not shifter by the way i'm not running shifter i think everybody is ready for shifter because kirstira is still probably the best deck out there so people are ready for shifter so i decided you know what people are thinking that i'm a shifter them but i'm not gonna do that right because they're ready for it so I'm just gonna scare them because I'm playing Flounders, but I'm not really gonna shift to them. So instead, we're playing three other six six other auto win cards. So we're playing, of course, the Harpy's Featherstorm. You have to play it. You can stack it with your Mega Risa. You can use it multiple times per turn. And lastly, we're playing the Wicked Avatar, which this actually came up in the finals. I ended up getting the last game versus branded uh i'm sorry nick but yeah and, and people started taking pictures of that they were like what does that card do yada what does that card do and basically it's a cold wave during your turn <laughs> just as easy as that cold wave during your turn you, if you're able to normal summon this tribute summon this you just kind of win especially because almost every deck in the meta needs their spells and trap cards so this is free wins uh this has all the properties of a car that needs to be banned <laughs> and I don't, I don't know what people are not talking about it so and uh, i was telling you guys that time theory morganite helps you make that gives you an additional summon so that plus field spell plus the flunder and pin they all work together to get you to your wicked avatar so yeah uh, i didn't want to show that card a lot but I mean, people are already talking about it on the group chat, so why not, right? Uh, but yeah, as always, guys, 
Uh, final thoughts is that Pink Flunder is a very, very strong deck. Very strong deck. Don't sleep on it. Uh, you guys may not know this, but Flunder got to the finals against full power tier multiple times. <laughs> right? And sure, they lost the small statue, but they're still... There's this, they got the time tier Morganite now. They're still, they're still very good guys. So as always guys, this was Yara here and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.